Let's talk about our top three books for productivity and time management. Number one, Getting Things Done by David Allen. Number two, Atomic Habits by James Clear. And number three, Eat That Frog, Brian Tracy. Yeah, today on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. And now your host, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Well, welcome everyone to the WBNL Wandering Without Lost podcast, where together we align, connect, and prosper. This is episode 290. 290! Oh, it's close to 300. You can find all those show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Well, Jenna Bryant, we've covered the personal books, our top three. We've covered the books for entrepreneurs. And today we're going to jump into those productivity and time management books. And you know what's really cool? It's kind of like, you know, the common theme, obviously, behind all these books is becoming aware of what's what, how you're functioning and how you're, you're facing certain things, and including your own thoughts. Well, kind of especially your own thoughts. Um, and, uh, it's, it's just been, it's been a nice, it's, it's been a nice journey. And it, you know, the focus is really on, you know, obtaining those goals, right? I think one of the sub focuses, and I think we t- we'll talk about that a little bit more today really has been how to really relieve the stress from your life. And I'm telling you that everyone's life needs a little less stress in it, right? It seems like today, because we are just so fast and furious on everything we do, any way you can reduce stress is going to make you more productive. So I guess let's just go ahead and jump in, Jenna Brian. Well, that's a perfect setup to the first book and definitely a book we always recommend here at WBNL Coaching. I recommend everybody I talk to for real estate coaching or small business entrepreneurs is getting things done Subtitle, The Art of Stress-Free Productivity by David Allen. This one almost has a cult following. If you go online and you Google it, you will see getting things done fans, GTD. So you'll hear people call it GTD. And there's all kinds of worksheets and people have adopted it. So we've talked about it on the podcast before, but we're going to give you a brief synopsis, our summary of getting things done with the key points and takeaways. So It is definitely a favorite among everyone that is just looking for time management. And his whole premise is he has this idea of a systematic approach that if you, uh, it's about helping organizing, managing your tasks. But the key to this thing here is is what I love all, all, I teach everyone to say, go do this because don't try to follow somebody telling you that you must follow this process, go do A, do B, do C. Where David Allen comes from is that he says stress comes from all the open loops that you have in your head that you think about all the time. Like for me, it'll be the middle of the night. I'm in the shower. I'm driving and I'm like, oh, I forgot to take care of that. So the premise of his system and his book is get all of the tasks that are running around inside of your head out of your head into an external system that you figure out works for you so that you can relieve the stress. Now, the key is you have to trust the system that you choose. So let's walk through it. And then it gets into, it's not just get it out of your head. It's a whole system of organization that there's a lot of flexibility in, which is what I love about it because not everybody is visual. Some people might prefer an app. Somebody might want to use a checklist on a notepads. Somebody else might want to use a file folder system for the different levels of things that you do, but you have to take action, right? So this whole system is about get the things out of your head, get them into an organized system that you trust that you're going to rely on so you don't have these additional stressors. So let's cover the key points. Capture everything. This means everything. So random thoughts, tasks that you have, projects, get it all out of your head, and which is the key to this whole thing, and put it down into a notebook, a digital tool, an app. And it goes through all the different things that you can do. But the whole point of that one is you just got to figure out what works, what works for you. Yeah. I'm into digital stuff. I have love apps. But I tell you something, I can't use a organization app because it means that I have to open it up and look at it. I really prefer a manual system that's more visual in front of me. I don't know. What do you I think? I agree 100%. 100%. The whole point is, what do you think, Listen, listeners, oh. <laughs> viewers? But that's what I want to know. That's my point. It's like you're that way, but someone else might find a way that works for them. And he walks through different ways that you can do things, okay? And then you clarify the task. And he has this system of if it's actionable, 
you decide if you can take action on it right now, whether you need to discard it, the, the thing that you say you need to do, can you delegate it or can you defer it? And that is so important because we get overwhelmed with a laundry list. So if you do a, a brain dump and list all the things that you need to go do and the projects and whatnot, you could be overwhelmed by it. So you, it takes you through a process of those four Ds, right? Is it actionable? Can I do it right now? Which kind of means, can I handle this thing that's on my list, this task in the next one to two minutes, then maybe go knock it out and take care of it. Can I delegate it to someone else? Can someone else do this for me? Can I, do I really need to do this? And, or can I defer it to later and move on to something in more priority? So that's kind of cool. And then you organize it into actions by context, like calls, maybe texts that you need to do, computer tasks, things that you have to do for personal, for your home, because you can't, you know, it's just not all about your business, right? I mean, I always have a list of personal things I need to go take care of, things I'm doing for in real estate business, things, it's, things for WBNL coaching. That is how my sheet is organized. It's like WBNL, Jan's to do, real estate things to do, you know, and maybe family things that need to follow up. There's another key task, a key point in here where you reflect every once in a while, you update your list. It's sort of like our quarterly checkup, but maybe monthly you go and you look at all of that. And then you have to take action. You have to engage in what it is you're going to do. So another big point in this is if it helps me so much to think about, you know, there's little tasks that are just things you need to go take care of. Like, here's the calls I need to make. Here's the follow-up I need to do. Here's a couple errands I have to go run. Here's the thing I need to go do. So those things are all kind of organized contextually into your categories. But then you take projects like a project, for example, putting your referral system in place for your business. So that's a big project. And you can get a lot of these getting things done, checklists and so forth online. And so it has an area for a project. What is the completion of the project look like? Write that out. What's the deadline? And then here's the key to this whole system. What is the absolute next action you have to take to move yourself forward to the out, you know, the outcome of that of that project? And what you really do is list everything you need to do. So to get going with this project of referral system, I need to decide on a CRM. That's a task. Then I need to upload my, you know, so you just keep going down the list, upload all my contacts. Maybe I need to get all my contacts because they're scattered everywhere. So you take 15, 20 minutes and you organize your thoughts on this project and you list them all. Now, this is what I love about this system. So imagine I have project A. I've taken the time to list out everything that I need to do. I do it for project B. So these are big projects that are going to take two or three tasks to get accomplished. You use an organization sheet like this. Then when you have schedule blocks of time to work on your business, like we talked about last week with um, EMS Revisited, you pull your project list out. And now you can immediately start working on tasks instead of taking 20 minutes to figure out what you should do next. That is the brilliance of the GTD system in my mind, along with all the other key things that are in there. So really, this is where the stress reduction comes in through organization and feeling that and, it, and it's the fact that you can trust that you have a system that you can go to when you're ready, which allows you to have more freedom and flexibility in your time management. Hey, Jana, Brian, I, I, let me jump in here for a second because I, I, there's a there's a key point of this that I think everyone really needs to not just brush over. And that if you're a manager, a team leader, a business owner, if you if you have a team that you're working with, or really, honestly, there's not anybody that's truly just doing something on their own. Even in your personal life, there's you know you you might have a you have friends and maybe a spouse, and you have you have you have support. Right. Don't skip the delegation part of this. I'm oh yeah. That is a, a a huge time suck for so many people that they just think that they've got to do it themselves or they can get it done faster if they do it themselves. Don't yes. don't do this. Really focus on if you can delegate something out, delegate it out, right? It's it's uh it can really, really reduce those daily tasks that you have to do if you you know, and actually, you know, it, it's funny. All, I was thinking about this when I was putting the show notes together for the thing. All of these three uh, podcasts we've done really are interconnected, right? Because if you have the right people on the bus, Jim Collins, right? Good to great. Then you can eat much more easily uh, uh, delegate your your tasks out because you have confidence and you know that the people underneath you are, are uh, capable of doing those tasks. So anyway, don't forget delegation. Very important. It's so awesome. And, and it really is this 
art of stress-free productivity, right? So the focus on action is really where GDT comes in. It helps you with how to figure out what's going to work for you, get the tasks out of your head. And then the action is what, once you have that in place, you can eliminate the overwhelm because you can take action you know, very specifically, and you feel like you're getting things done. That's why it's called getting things done. As opposed to the chaos of what do I work on? I feel like so many people who don't have an organized approach to whatever it is they're going to do, spend so much time worrying about what should I work on that they don't get anything done. Yep. Right. Yep. So uh, he talks also about the importance of a weekly review. I was just mentioning how important it, but he actually has in there a weekly review. Where am I at? Because sometimes your priorities change and you can move something um, to you know, another priority. There's one other thing that just came to my mind that when things are in your your head about projects or things that you want to do, anything that you want to do, you have like, I need to prioritize and do it now, but you can have a category for a folder or something or a list or a notebook called someday maybe. And don't forget this part. This is so amazing. Someday maybe are things that you really want to work on that you, you might, maybe you're excited about working on, but they're maybe not the best things for you to do right now. If your focus is, for example, I need to do activities that are going to generate income for my business, but I have you know six or seven projects over here that I really think are going to help me. But if they're not directly going to impact, you know that they're not going to particularly impact getting uh, in front of people that want your product to buy or sell real estate or whatever your product or service is. You still don't want to give it up because that's the problem. If you keep on thinking about these other five things that you want to do, then you're not being productive. So you put it into the someday maybe folder. And you know that you've taken it out of your head, right. close that loop. It's over here in this trusted area that you'll get to when you have the time. Because that's the thing with multitasking. There's a lot of people, and I was one of them, man. I'm better at this now. I had so many little different projects going on because I would get bored with working on one thing. And I want to go juggle eight things that I'm doing right now, but nothing's getting done. All right. So that's getting things done have to go get that one or listen to it. It is brilliant. Can I, right? can I just applaud you for a moment, Jenna, Brian, because you have really improved in that portion of your time management. As a matter of fact, just the other day, and I don't know if you remember even saying this, but you actually stopped yourself from going down the rabbit hole on something like, nope, don't have time for that right now. That's, That's not right. going to be on my loop. I was, I almost like, you know, did a little applause. <laughs> I mean, I did an internal applause and standing ovation for Jenna Bryan when you said that. Well, you know what was going on for me was the internal thing of like, oh, that sounds like so fun to start working on that project right. because that's the kind of stuff I like to do, the creative part, get going with it. That's and I'm like, right. nope, that is not going to generate income for Jen O'Brien right now. Nope. Let's go put it into the someday maybe folder. It's just Thank so you. nice when you, you know, we talk because we do really do walk or talk, right? And it is awesome to, to watch. It's been fun to watch you turn that corner because you turned it. That is an awesome so look, book. I ordered these little books that I found online, and one of these is going to be my little project book of notes and someday maybe things that of, of oh, ideas, nice. whether it be ideas for content or other projects that I want to work on, because I like little journals and notebooks. That's the way I choose to do things. So I was just holding up a five-tab smaller spiral notebook, which you can find in any office store or online at Amazon or wherever you shop for things. All right, let's move to the second book. Atomic Habit Subtitle, An Easy and Proven Way to Build Good Habits and Break Bad Ones by James Clear. Now, people had recommended this book to me so many times and I just never, you know, I always had it in the back of my mind. I just never went and got it. I never read it until one day I decided to do it. It was when I was driving to come visit you guys in California that I listened to Atomic Habits on the way out and on the way back. And it is an amazing book, okay? So what I love about this book is it's about making tiny changes to your habit, identifying various things that you're doing in a very easy, God, just so, the guy has such great stories in here. He puts scientific research mixed in with stories that helps you really understand how you can apply what he's covering uh, in the book. So the summary really is this, the quality of our lives depends on the quality of our habits with the right system in place. Mm -hmm. See the key, the key thing oh. here. 
<laughs> With the right system in place, good habits can emerge naturally and lead to sus sustained success. So he talks about in the book that right now you have habits that are subconscious. And if you become aware of that, you can use some of the techniques he teaches in here to make these small changes that over time make huge results in your life. An example of what you can think of is the compounding effect of interest. Like when you save just a little bit of money every month over years, how much that you know, how much that grows is that's kind of the analogy, one of the analogies that he uses, right? So the core approach is using is to focus on small changes, collectively build on them. And that's why he calls it atomic habit. So it's because it's overwhelming for everybody to go, gosh, I really realize that I don't get up and I don't work out and I don't do all these things. And I'm going to change that. And I'm going to go to the gym in January. And I'm going to have a resolution. And, and it's overwhelming. And so people just slip back into what they subconsciously know. That's right. So it has you walk through and identify, wow, that is totally a subconscious habit that I do every day. So he covers first, let's talk about these key points, the four laws of behavior change. He introduces a simple set of rules and it starts with make it obvious, design your environment to clearly highlight the cues for good habits. So he talks about habit stacking. So I have a couple examples of habit stacking. Here's an example so you can see it. A morning routine habit stack. Original habit. I get up every day. I make a cup, cup of coffee every morning. I do that. You do that too. I do right? that. All right. New habit. While waiting for the coffee to brew, I meditate for one minute. This is called habit stacking. So the habit stack is after, and you, you, you kind of say this. So after I make my morning coffee, I will meditate for one minute. <clears throat> and you do that. That's a small little thing that you can introduce that if you did it every day, and it's a cue. I make coffee. Oh, while it's brewing, I go, I go meditate. <clears throat> or I go do a one minute, you know, breathing exercise. Brilliant. Here's another uh, habit stack for exercise. Original habit, brushing your teeth. New habit, do 10 squats. After I brush my two teeth, I do 10 squats. So he gives tons of examples like this that you just build habit stacks and you, if you do it, small little baby steps, everybody could just you know meditate for one minute after brewing their coffee or putting their coffee on, uh, right? Or brushing their teeth, do 10 squats or whatever it is. It's the idea that you do it each day. You know, Another one would be, I get up, I make my bed. After I make my bed, I do X. And so it just becomes these simple things you introduce and you start to realize how it, it changes things uh, you know, over time. So another one, hydration habit stack. Every time you eat lunch, uh, original habit, every time I eat lunch, new habit, I drink a glass of water, okay? Uh, so the, the habit stack thing you say to yourself, I eat my lunch, I drink a glass of water. And one more gratitude, I love this one. Sitting down to dinner each night is the original habit. So now say one thing you're grateful for that happened today. We've talked about this mm -hmm, before, all the time. Right? When I sit down to dinner, I always say one thing that I'm grateful for. So instead of trying to say, well, I'm going to do a gratitude journal and I'm going to do an exercise routine. Do you get the idea here? You're just habit stacking. You're, make, you're taking tiny steps and you're making it super clear and you're making it obvious. That's step one. Make it obvious because it's tied to something like brushing your teeth or brewing your coffee in the morning. Make it attractive is the next one. A pair in action uh, you want to do with an action you need to do to make your habits more appealing. I just gave you a couple examples of that. Make it easy. Reduce the friction associated with making changing into these good habits by simplifying them with minimal effort. Again, I just went through the habit stack so you could really kind of see how one little small thing. So can you imagine if you just... If you wanted to have a meditation practice and you just did one minute, then before you know it, you'd be going into two minutes or five minutes. And now all of a sudden you're meditating. That's the whole point of this atomic habits idea and make it satisfying. You know, you reinforce the good habits because you feel good because you, you, you went and did the thing and you just did like one small thing. Okay. I, I'm telling you, this absolutely works. And I, I've, I've been doing this over the last couple of months and not really even knowing that I was so on track with what we're talking about here. I have completely changed my nightly routine. And um, the whole purpose of the habit stacking in this particular situation was to make my morning easier and more productive. And it has, and I've noticed it. And and now it's funny. I get to a certain part of the night and it's like, it's time for the nightly routine. So, and then I start going through all these, yeah. these steps. It's really, it, it can be, it can change your uh, mindset and your productivity level and time management, all of them, um, greatly, 
greatly. So <laughs> Love habit it. stack. See you doing it. I've been really integrating these things too because it's amazing. And you just before you know it, you you just and the whole point. I guess what I'm trying to say is when I listened to this book, because I listened to it, I, I really had the ahas of wow, I am I already have a whole system of habits that might not be the best habits that I do subconsciously. Yeah. And so this is about becoming aware of what those are, making minor changes and being patient that over time you start seeing the results. But the whole point is you can have massive results. So just, he uses examples of just changing what you're eating with small things, mm -hmm. one little thing, like eliminating sugar or yeah. like nothing drastic. Okay. Just doing one thing, habit stack and adding something healthy to what you're eating, drinking water, for example. And after a while, you start to do it subconsciously. That's the beautiful thing. You get up every day and you brush your teeth. You don't have to stop and go, oh, I have to go brush Do you know what's teeth. funny, Jan? Uh, I, you know, just to add on to that just a little bit, what I have noticed with my <laughs> routine at night, I, I'm sleeping better because I'm there's things I know I don't have to do tomorrow or there's not things that I have. You know what I mean? I'm not, I, I, I'm, I, it's all almost getting back to the last book, right? It's like <laughs> I've gotten that stuff out of my head now. <laughs> and actually, the task is already done too. And it just makes things much more smooth. It's weird. It's awesome. It so really is awesome. His his other another key takeaway is focus on systems, not goals, because what he says is systems are what lead to change a sustained change. So having the system, that habit stack is what's really going to do it. The power of tiny gains. There's so many examples in there of how the compound effect of one small habit. He illustrates it, in, it with all these brilliant ways where you're like, wow, I can do this. Yeah. So that's what that's really what you'll you'll get from this, you know, and it talks about tracking your habits and accountability in this habit formation. So I think it's really powerful. Small changes matter. You know, you focus on the process. You don't get all overwhelmed with like, this is too much for me to do. It's really, really a great listen or read and, and easy to implement by just choosing one area of your life that you want to work That's on. That's right. Okay, so Atomic Habits. James Clear, go check that one out. And our final book today for productivity and time management is one of my all-time favorites. It's a really easy book to read. It's not very big. I recommend buying this one because, you know, it's a good one to just pick up. So it's Eat That Frog, 21 Great Ways to Stop Procrastinating and Get More Done in Less Time Preach. by Brian Tracy. Now, Brian Tracy is just a favorite of a lot of business people. He's written so many books on time management and setting goals and all of that. But the big deal here is eat that frog is derived from a Mark Twain saying that if you eat a live frog first thing in the morning, nothing worse will happen to you the rest of the day. Okay. So his metaphor for the frog represents the most challenging task on your to-do to -do list. So guess what business people and entrepreneurs, guess what most people's most challenging Hello. task is. Hello. That's right. It's called prospecting, business development, attracting new business. This is what everybody procrastinates on and fills their day with the number five things from our do the daily, right? You get into all the admin. There you go. You're holding up to do the daily, right? So his whole idea and premise in this book is he offers 21 strategies to help you stop proc procrastinating and tackle your biggest, mo most important task. Because when you do the thing you're avoiding, you will have massive results happen in your business. <laughs> what do you okay? know? So he he goes through several. I'll just hit a few of them so you can get the book and read it. You know, so set the table. You have to have clear goals. He's big about writing goals, so he talks about that. Plan every day in advance. Now, Matt, you were just talking about that. You do an evening routine, right? And you you know you you know some people do that too, where you get clear about what you're going to do tomorrow, and you can go to sleep and know that everything's handled, and you wake up and you know what you're going to do plan your day in advance, right? Yep. He talks about the 80-20 rule, right? It's the Pareto principle. It suggests that 20% of your activities will account for 80% of your results. Identify and focus on those tasks. And guess what? Guess what that is? It's the, the first three in our do the daily. Lead generate, follow up with leads, you know, um, well, do the daily is number one is uh, morning do your morning routine, which I think gets you in the right mindset so you can go do lead generation and lead follow up. That's where you need to spend 20 percent. I mean, 20 um, percent of your activities account for 80 percent of your results. You, you need to know that that meaning I guess the better way to explain this is people spend not enough time doing that because they're doing all these other things that don't generate their 
income. That's right. Okay. So that's the idea there. Uh, you know, so practice creative procrastination, learn to deliberate procrastinate on tasks that are low value. So you have more time to do the ones that are high value. He's got like an ABCDE method where A is a must do, B is a should do, C is a nice to do, D is delegate, ah. and E is eliminate. So it's just another idea of how to organize and prioritize because everything can't be an A, right? And there are some things that you could E eliminate, or you could also, you know, uh, do the same thing as we talked about in getting things done where you delete it, right? Focus on key results areas. Your key results areas are what you will identify ahead of time on where should you spend your time and effort that's going to generate the highest return for your time, okay? Uh, so honestly, I love Eat That Frog. There's just a whole bunch of little great ideas in there that, you know, so, some of the 21 things are going to maybe resonate with you and then you can Im implement them, but it's a really quick read. It's kind of fun but it's all about the same things that we talked about today. Find ways to get the stress out of your life. Some of the stress out of your life comes from, and I really agree with this, uh, from all these thoughts that you're having yep. and you're not finishing. And so you're not, you don't have a plan. I'm telling you, most people that reach out to me over the years that want coaching have this number one concern. I am chaotic. How can you help me with managing my time? Can you help me with how I can have a good week schedule set up? Because I'm always overwhelmed. Well, here's three books that can help you with that. Yeah, we just had a client we talked to last week that actually could really uh, use um, uh, to some of these concepts into helping to streamline her day. Right. So um, we need to give her a call and say, "You better listen to episode 290." Thank you very, thank you very much. <laughs> That's it. So those are three good ones for anybody in any Great business. Books. All right, everyone. We have all of the show notes for the uh, these three books over at WBNLpodcast.com. This was episode 290. Also in the show notes, and if you're watching on YouTube, down in the description below, or the yeah, the description below, we have a link to our WBNL resources page on our websites, WBNLcoaching.com. Just go to our resource page, and you can have a, there's a link to all those books. If you already have these in your library, you can go ahead and get them in your library or in your audio library. And there's a lot of other um, just tools and tips for mindset and stuff on that page as well. So wbnlcoaching.com, go to our more tab, go to the resource page, and there you are. It's in the show notes and wbnlpodcast.com, episode 290. Shout out Brian with our 300th episode coming up in just 10 episodes. We better do something fun. What can we do for fun? We'll have to think that one through. I feel like we should be, when will that be? Well, <laughs> we can plan a... Uh... <clears throat> It'll be 10 more weeks. 10 weeks. 10 weeks from yeah. What, what we're going to do the math on that. That's kind of sad that it took us both that long to process 10. I would love to be able to do a, um, a, a live broadcast somewhere, like where we were, we've done what we've done before. We'll have to find okay, That's a fun idea. Maybe happen. get some guests back and, and uh, we'll see. We'll, we'll have to plan that out because 300 is a mile is a pretty big milestone. You know, a lot of, most podcasts don't make it to 300. So we're excited about that. Exactly. I'm looking at when that's going to be. Sometime in July, right? <laughs> yeah. Ten weeks? Yeah, it'll be, it'll be sometime in July, right? I think that's right. One, yeah. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ooh, this could really work out. I have an idea. Ah, okay. Everyone else, you're just going to have to wait. Ooh, the suspense. Okay. We better put the the the, the uh, countdown timer on our uh, podcast page. I think it's July 12th if I've got it right. So that's I awesome. just counted it up. All right, everyone. You got to go out, get up and get out. Now, I'm telling you the weather. I don't know where you are in the world. If you are in the, the part of the country that's getting just blasted with all those tornadoes and rain, I'm sorry about that right now. But for us on the West Coast, I don't know. We're, we're it's, it's very nice. It's, it's getting hot. It's a beautiful spring, right? Yeah, it actually is starting to get a little bit warmer. We had a very exciting little moment the other afternoon, a nice little 4.1 earthquake that was probably only about four miles from our homestead here. I was walking oh, down the stairs, I know that. walking down the stairs, and, you know, every earthquake is a little bit different. This was just a jolt, and it was scary as heck. I mean, if you didn't think I was immediately grabbing onto the handrail uh, of the stairs, wow. it was... Uh, uh, frightening and you're always like okay is this the one 
Um, it was 4.1. That's not uh, that large of a degree, but boy, yeah, you're, yeah, when, you're, when you're you're literally almost right on top of the epicenter. Um, it's it was an experience. So I know, but I always feel good when you have those. It feels like my whole thing is it keeps my mind, you know, in peace. Is okay. We've relieved the stress of the Earth, and now we're fine for a little while. Mother Earth is shaking things up. That's all I'm saying. That's right. Keep all right, growing. everyone. As Jan already said, get up, get out. And be forever wandering, but not lost. Please do. Boop. Boop.